her to. Oh, thank you for recording, Annalisa. I always forget that. <laughs> okay, so let me start that. I'm passing it off to Genesee, and she's going to tell us about her program. Thanks, Genesee. Well, hello, everybody. Um, first, I wanted to start off by introducing myself. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Um, so I graduated from Humboldt State University with my bachelor's in recreation, and then I just got my master's from Texas, um, uh, North Texas University and a uh, university in Costa Rica um, in uh, international sustainable tourism. So tourism is really my like interest, and I really love doing stuff related to that in economic development. So I'm uh, really excited to do this uh, Google My Business project because um, it really, uh, really, it's a lot to tourism and people coming and visiting different businesses and leaving reviews and making sure that they're accessing the like correct information and everything. So, um, yeah, so it's a pretty cool project. Um, basically, we're helping business up, uh, businesses update their Google um, My Business listing, um, so we can help you claim your business and verify it on Google if you haven't done that already. Um, as well as look at optimizing the information that you have on there so that customers are accessing the right information. So, um, yeah, I have a few businesses that have contacted me already. So um, I'm excited to work with them and get to uh, know more businesses and stuff that are part of the chamber. Yeah. Thanks, Jesse. Yeah, we're really excited about this um, to be offering it free for chamber members and um, I'm sure most of you have, you know, traveled anywhere out of the area or even within the area. And the first place that shows up on your phone when you look for somewhere to go is Google. And um, as genesee has been rolling out this program and she's been searching the businesses within Humboldt County and a lot of them are not on Google and that's crazy. So this is gonna really help improve um, the visitors coming to our area and just locals being able to find you, find your business and find each other. So uh, please get, get in touch with us if you would like help with this new free program. Molly, could I also add, um, uh, this is Ken here, everyone. Genesee is also gonna probably join us for a podcast on sustainable tourism, what it is, why it's such an emerging important force for Humboldt County. And so stay tuned for that. Thanks, Ken. Ken Hammock is our current board chair. And we also have Jim Ritter and Matt Kerr, who are also board members in the house tonight. And actually that's a perfect segue because we do have some openings on our board of directors right now. And we are looking for some new uh, motivated, inspired individuals who wanna jump on this really great team. So please let us know if this sounds interesting to you. Another announcement that I wanted to let you guys know about is that it's time for us to be rolling out our annual business leadership awards. And most of you, well, actually, I don't know if you all know because you're not all familiar faces to me, but this is a very prestigious awards um, event that we do uh, here at the chamber. And oh, hi, Sorrel, <laughs> another board member. <laughs> um, the, the annual business leadership awards are recognized throughout the county um, from the Arcata Chamber as for, uh, excuse me, um, businesses that are above and beyond for that year. The Arcata Chamber members choose the winners of these awards, nominating each other and voting on all of you on each other's businesses to um, show the outstanding work that you've done for the past year. And right now we have started the nomination phase for this. So we really need everybody who is a chamber member to nominate businesses this year for this award. So then we'll choose the nominees based on your nominations and then the membership votes on the winners. Sorry, I feel like I'm just like floundering with this description, but it's really cool. And we need, um, we need everybody to be involved. Um, and another thing that we're looking at with these awards right now is um, what's the event gonna look like this winter? Of course, none of us know, but we do want to hear from you. What's your opinion? Maybe you'll feel comfortable doing an in-person event. Maybe you want it to be virtual. Maybe you know that right now. So, We've queued up a poll for tonight. It's our first time doing a poll on Zoom. Annalisa is going to pop it up onto your screen. And, um, and please just click 
the choice on that poll. It's not going to commit you to anything, um, but it'll just give us a little more feedback. And we're putting this survey out to our members also through email and all over the place. So um, take the poll. Thank you. It'll be fun. And while you're looking at the poll, I just wanted to read off the categories for the awards that we're doing this year. So there are six awards that we give out. Um, and here are the categories. COVID Resilient Business of the Year. We added this category last year and we're keeping it again because it is still relevant. Um, Hospitality and Tourism of the Year, Small Business of the Year, Nonprofit of the Year, and, and I have nonprofit listed twice. The other one is New Chamber Member of the Year. And the fun thing about this one is that um, on the ballot, we have a list of all the new chamber members. And so it's a really cool way that we're highlighting the new chamber members that joined in 2021. And, um, and just another way that you guys can see each other and get to know each other. And we will, if Annalisa has it queued up, she'll put the link in the chat for the nomination ballot. If you feel like nominating tonight, go for it. If you don't, please do it another time. We really, really need uh, you to take your time to nominate. I think I'm gonna stop talking because I'm just rambling on and um, I'm gonna pass it over to the other amazing staff member on our team, the lovely Annalisa. Thank you so much, lovely Molly. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and end the poll um, unless you haven't uh, cast your preference for the in-person, virtual, or either option. Um, go ahead and do that really quick. Last couple seconds here. It looks like, oh, 100% answered. Awesome. I'm going to just end that one. Uh, excuse me for a moment here. Okay. So I uh, just have a couple of announcements. Uh, we are excited to have an in-person mixer that's going to be, uh, have lots of protocols, safety protocols in place, plenty of space, plenty of vent ventilation and room to move around, masking, sanitizer, all that, um, at Redwood Rocks World Dance Studio in January. Uh, they have, they reorganized themselves as a nonprofit. And so we're going to have a ribbon cutting with them as well on December 11th. And we will have uh, the in-person mixer in the first Thursday of January. Um, and so we'll have more information on that as far as what will be offered at that event in the coming weeks in our uh, social media as well as, as well as our e-letter. So check that out. And uh, let's see. Also, just always want to remind you that we have uh, ad space available, top ad space starting in February and moving forward from there, $25 per issue up to four consecutive issues. It's a great way to reach over 2,000 subscribers. So if you have any flyers, just send them to me, JPEG, PNG, um, you know, uh, image files, please. And then I'll also take any of those announcements and post them in our social media. And that's what I'm here to do is help promote you. So please um, also tag at Arcata Chamber in your social media, and I will repost for you. And that's it for me for my announcements. Carol, would you like to start on a couple of raffle prizes? And that's a great idea. So once again, this is a wonderful way to get your business name out there by donating prizes. The first one is donated by Arcata Main Street. It is one of the awesome Arcata coupon books, value of $10. This has been won by from uh, Coast Central Credit Union, Matt A. Matt from Coast Central Credit Union won that one. And we'll do our second one. This is, again, Rob Rice tends to donate quite often. Thank you, Rob, so much. This is a one hour massage with Rob. And this has been won by Shoshana. Shoshana, congratulations. Shall we do one more? This next one is donated by Coast Central Credit Union. Again, someone that uh, donates on a regular basis. This is a basket of local goodies, including wine, coffee, chocolates, cookies, uh, Coast Central wine glasses and coffee mugs. And this has been won by From the Chamber. Genesee, congratulations, what a way to do it. Okay, Molly, back to you. 
Thank you so much, Carol. And again, thanks to everybody that donated amazing local prizes again tonight. So now I would like to pass it along to HCOE. Uh, again, we're so grateful to have you all here tonight and uh, interested in hearing your presentation. Well, great. Thank you so much, Molly. And hello, everyone. It's nice to see you. While I start the share screen, would you do me a favor in the chat? Put the mascot name of the high school or elementary school that you went to as a child. And I'm going to take that time while you're putting that in the chat. Look at that. To share my screen. Share real fast, share, make sure I'm sharing sound. I always forget to share sound on these things. Okay. Great. If you can give me a thumbs up, if you see the screen, that would be fantastic. Can you see my screen okay? Yeah? Great. Okay. Well, good evening, everyone. I really am, uh, we are all so pleased to be here um, this evening. And we are going to take some time to share about some things that are going on. And uh, but before we do that, I'd like to just do a, a, some introductions. My name's Colby Smart. I'm the Assistant Superintendent for Educational Services at the Humboldt County Office of Education. And we have Michael Davies Hughes. Michael, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, good evening, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to to host this evening. And as Colby said, I'm Michael Davies Hughes. I'm the superintendent of schools for Humboldt County. And I'm in my, I don't know, 18th day on the job, I believe, something like that, 1820. So. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. And we have Tanya Trump. Tanya, would you like to introduce yourself? You can figure out how to unmute. Yeah, hi, I'm Tanya Trump. I'm the program manager for the Career and College Resources Department at HCOE. And I'm gonna share a little bit today about some of the programs that we have going on in our department. Excellent, thank you, Tanya. And again, everyone, thanks so much for inviting us in this evening. Uh, we're gonna start off by having Michael talk a little bit about the role of the superintendent of schools and so on and so forth. So Michael, I'm gonna uh, turn it right over to you. Yes, thank you, Colby. Can you give me someone give me a thumbs up to make sure that you are able to hear me correctly? All right, we're good. Thank you. Well, once again, I appreciate the opportunity to um, to co-host your chamber mixer this evening, and I just want to let you know a little bit about um, Humboldt County Office of Education and the work we do. And maybe I can just start with myself. Um, I mentioned that you know this is a new position for me. It's my 29th year in education, my 20th year as an administrator in Humboldt County. The role of the superintendent of schools is primarily to promote the educational quality or to improve the educational quality for students in Humboldt County. That's at its simplest form and most elegant form. That is the, the role and responsibility that I have. Um, I will say moreover than that, that I am one of 58 county superintendents throughout the state of California. Uh, a little trivia for you, 53 of those county superintendents, including myself, are uh, elected by the public in the county. So those are elected positions. And then three of those 58 are actually elected by the county board of education. And one county superintendent, that's Los Angeles County, is actually uh, appointed by the county board of supervisors. So there's a little bit of trivia for you in regards to the Humboldt County, sorry, the superintendent of school across the state. Um, I have included a picture there of my summer. You know, what did you do last summer? You think, what did you do last summer? So last summer, um, June of 2021, I successfully completed the Race Across America, which is a 3,000 mile bicycle race from Oceanside, California to, uh, to Annapolis, Maryland. It must be completed within 12 days. And this was my second attempt. I did it in 2018 and went as far as Ohio, central Ohio, 2,500 miles in. But this year, made it. So when I am not a superintendent of schools, 
I'm taking care of my family. Um, I do like to ride my bicycle uh, in this beautiful country that we have and a beautiful county that we have. So I am just so honored um, and privileged to live in this in this area. And I think it was Genesea that said that she uh, has been you know, doing work in her graduate work around ecotourism and, and spent time in Costa Rica. I spent two years as a teacher in El Salvador. And I will tell you that, you know, El Salvador, another Central American country, um, but very different in, than Costa Rica because of the amount of deforestation that took place. So, you know, just a different mindset in taking care of, you know, their environment in El Salvador, very different than what they did and the foresight that they had um, in Costa Rica. So um, just, I'm also very interested uh, as Colby is as well, in terms of uh, uh, international aspects of, of education. So the role of the Humboldt County of Office of Education, I think there's a misunderstanding generally that, that the Humboldt County of Office of Education is in charge of the 31 school districts that are, that are in Humboldt County. And uh, that is actually not true. The Humboldt County of Office of Education has really very limited authority over those 31 different school districts. Um, we have a responsibility of fiscal oversight, so we approve budgets that come. Uh, the second role that we have as a County of Office of Education is that we approve some of those plans, some of those state plans that have to be submitted. First of all, they have to be vetted by the Humboldt County Office of Education um, so before they go on to the state. But really, very little um, uh, authority that we have over those 31 school districts. But we are very much vested in the outcomes for students in that 31 school districts. You know, we have school districts that have as few as three students. So any idea what school district uh, I don't know if this is a raffle prize question, but <laughs> let me just put it out there to you. What school district do you think in Humboldt County has currently has three students? Oh, I see it in the chat. Ah. <laughs> Some of you I know already have the inside scoop on that. Jim, I'm not sure if yours is a, is a fair, <laughs> fair response there, but you're absolutely right. Uh, the majority of the responses there was Maple Creek. So yeah, Maple Creek has three students. And then I'll, you know, uh, spoiler alert here, I'll give you the answer on the largest school district, which is Eureka City Schools with about 3,700 students. So really, you know, we uh, span the spectrum in terms of the number of students that we serve and support in Humboldt County. And not only numbers, but just the, the demographics as well. You know, we're, uh, as a county, we're about 57 to 58% uh, uh, students living in poverty, right? And that really, you know, we have some schools, thinking of schools like Alice Burney and Eureka C City Schools, that percentage is around 92% of students who are living in poverty. And when we're thinking about some of the challenges that we have as an educational organization and as an educational community is how do we address the needs of the diversity of students that we have? And you know, COVID, and we'll talk about COVID a little bit because you can't have any kind of conversation these days without talking about COVID. But we'll try not to make it, you know, uh, uh, too political or controversial with you. But I'll tell you the fact is that we are understanding that due to COVID, you know, we have students that have had some lost learning or learning loss or interrupted learning or unfinished learning, whatever you might call it, because they, they have not been able to meet in person, right? Or they weren't for a period of time. I'm happy to report that all our schools all of our schools across the county now are offering in-person instruction. But for a time we were not. And what we found is that there's been some learning loss for students. And we also have found that that learning loss has been exacerbated through some of those demographic differences. For example, for students who are living in poverty, for students who are English learners, um, we've sound, found that that opportunity gap in terms of education has actually widened as a result of the pandemic. And so we need to be very cognizant of how can we close that opportunity gap, not only for you know, all the students that we have, but especially looking at the students who have been um, you know, more impacted by 
uh, the, the closure of schools to in-person in instruction. So, you know, that is a challenge that we have in the present. So the present challenge that we also have and that we need to support as Humboldt County Office of Education is, you know, our schools are doing some of the work that you would not expect or that people didn't sign up to do, right? If they signed up to be a teacher or a principal, they did not necessarily sign up to do COVID testing every day or contact tracing for families, right? When we have a positive case, but that's the work that, we're, that many of our leaders are doing. And so we have to help them through that. So we do that through supporting them testing, providing them test kits, may, having, giving them access to resources um, and partnering with public health. But we also have to help our educators move beyond the pandemic, right? We've got to kind of clear that path and support them to the other side of the pandemic. And that's the exciting work that we have before us as a Humboldt County Office of Education. And I know that Tanya and Colby are gonna talk about some of those exciting things that we are offering. So with that, I'm gonna segue over to Colby. Michael, thank you so much for that segue. I was pretty slow on the mute button, sorry about that. Um, all right, everybody. So I hear that trivia is a big thing at the Arcata Chamber. And so here what I'd love to do is just unmute if you know the answer to this question. Uh, in the late 1800s, this school merged with which school district near the Arcata Bottoms? Which school district near the Arcata Bottoms? Anybody have an idea? This school is called Canal School. Some of you may have driven past it and you didn't even know it. It's still, it's still standing. Oh, in the Shoshana, Shoshana, yes, Pacific Union. Good job, you, nicely done, nicely done. Yeah, in the late 1800s, uh, Canal School uh, merged with uh, Pacific Union. Believe it or not, back then, we had over 100 school districts in Humboldt County. Most of them were surrounded uh, by industries uh, like agriculture and logging and the fishing industry. Um, and we still have a lot of remnants of those uh, today. So one of the programs that, uh, that we oversee at the Humboldt County Office of Education, and actually has been going on for over 30 years, is a program called Steelhead in the Classroom. It's a classroom aquarium education program. Um, <clears throat> over 52 teachers uh, participate in this program every year, and it's increasing. Um, and what we thought we would do is show you just a little bit of video about this program because it speaks to the incredible importance that we place um, on partnership, industry partnerships and public private partnerships uh, in Humboldt County to further advance uh, education in, in our area. So I'm gonna go ahead and press play. This is a short little video. Greetings from Humboldt County, located 300 miles north of San Francisco, with a population of 134,800 people, thinly scattered over 3,500 miles. The largest cities, Eureka, population 26,050, Arcata, population 17,201, and smaller towns are surrounded by majestic redwoods, isolated beaches, and the Coast Range. Hello, my name is Olivia Kernan, and I coordinate the Humboldt County Office of Education's Steelhead in the Classroom program. Our team is excited to share information about the program, our local watershed, and ecosystem with you. Over the last 30 years, the Classroom Aquarium Education Program's Steelhead in the Classroom has provided Humboldt County K through 12th grade students a unique hands-on opportunity to study aquatic habitats, ecosystems, and salmonoid life cycles. Steelhead in the Classroom staff works with the teachers to set up and operate chilled aquariums in their classrooms, replicating the cold water ecosystem of our local Mad River watershed. Well known for its ancient redwoods and for the rivers and streams that support one of the best remaining wild salmon and steelhead runs in California. Classrooms receive eyed eggs from the California Department of Fish and Wildlife Mad River Hatchery to hatch and raise steelhead fry for eight weeks in the spring. 
The experience culminates with each classroom of students attending a field trip to the Mad River Hatchery, where the fry they've raised are released into their native Mad River watershed. A full tour of the hatchery and rearing ponds is also part of the field trip. The favorite day of, for me in this program is the actual release day when the students have had the fish in their classrooms for maybe eight to 10 weeks. They bring a field trip, a, a bus out of students to the hatchery, and then we conduct a field trip. And for a lot of these students, it's the first time they've ever seen the Mad River. So that's kind of special. It's the, it's the home of where the eggs were harvested in January, and we're returning them back to the same watershed. There are so many highlights. Of course, when Jim comes and brings the eggs, the kids get super excited about that and watching them go into the tank. But I think the bigger part is knowing and watching when the eggs are gonna hatch and keeping an eye out for that. And this year we were able to actually see some alvin in between the rocks. And so the kids were really excited about that. We got to um, talk about it, talk about the yolk sac and how that feeds them until it completely absorbs into their body. And then eventually they start coming up for food. So that was a really exciting part for the kids to see them. This program adds special significance as the steelhead trout are listed under the Endangered Species Act. And students get to learn firsthand how Andromeda's fish navigate from freshwater river systems to saltwater estuaries and eventually continue their life cycle into the ocean. Our program's mission is to improve teacher and students' understanding, appreciation, and stewardship of fishes while creating an awareness of the needs of the aquatic environment through the use of classroom aquaria. This year, we're so excited to be partnering with the Pathmakers program to provide culturally and linguistically responsive program for native and non-native youth to learn more about our local ecosystem and environment. I still hit it in the classroom, especially because there's a partnership between Humboldt County Office of Education, Blue Lake Rancheria, and our local native community to share traditional ecological knowledge about salmon, about the rivers, about the environment around us. It's part of the healing process. It's part of sharing culture between our groups because we're all part of the same community dedicated to protecting our watersheds, our rivers, and our fish. Program activities provide students with the experience of learning firsthand about the value of aquatic environments, the balance that must be met to maintain and preserve Humboldt County's fisheries and aquatic habitats, and how their actions affect these valuable resources. These types of programs open all sorts of possibilities for students and teachers alike. They help students make connections between classroom learning and real-world applications. Science, math, language, even history come alive when students are afforded the opportunity to learn in the field. Students are introduced to the many career opportunities available to them. And also, and finally, when kids interact with nature and those who work with nature, they are not only exposed to science, but they begin to see themselves as scientists. Steelhead in the Classroom is proud to serve over 900 students annually in 40 plus classrooms. The 1,500 eggs given to the classrooms resulted in 750 fry being released and over 800 students touring the Blue Lake Fish Hatchery. The Steelhead in the Classroom program is grateful to the key individuals and organizations that collaborate with the program to contribute to its success. Well, I think uh, reaching out to children is important. Um, making sure that children in, in the school system um, are uh, passionate about fish, passionate about salmon. We are, you know, working with uh, students uh, on the East Coast, on the West Coast, and um, creating that passion for, you know, salmon and for fish and for the ecosystem is important. In the coming year, the program will continue to seek collaboration with volunteers and community organizations that align with our educational goal and the pursuit of teaching students about the scientific principles of fish and wildlife conservation and the ecosystems around them. Thank you for your interest in the Steelhead in the Classroom program. If you'd like to learn more about the program or if you would like to collaborate with us, please let us know.
Okay, so, um, you know, I just, I can't stress enough how important it is that um, partnership, what the role that partnership plays in developing and sustaining programs like this. Um, organizations like, um, you know, Fish and Wildlife, Fish and Game, uh, like Humboldt Area Saltwater Anglers, Nordic Aqua Farms, which is a new industry, as you all know, that's coming into our community. And then also deeper partnerships with our, our tribal uh, communities through Blue Lake, Blue Lake Rancheria. This is all enabling us as a community to look at career technical education, not something that kids do in high school and after high school, but it's programs like this that help get kids interested in the application of science and the real world um, opportunities that nature and place play in education. So um, I, I'll throw, feel free if you have any questions about this program or any programs throughout this presentation, just unmute and ask those questions. Um, and Molly and Annalisa, I'm not sure if you have timed, you know, um, if you have times for uh, raffle, raffle prizes, but you can also just unmute and let us know. Okay. All right. Yeah, sounds good. We can do the raffle prizes after your presentation if you want. Okay. Um, and we'll also have time for question and answer afterward as well. So nobody will feel like they're missing out on getting their questions asked. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Molly. Appreciate it. Yeah. Okay, ready. Here's trivia question number two. In 2023, the Humboldt County Office of Education will celebrate its blank birthday, 75 years, 170 years, 95 years, or 125 years. Who has a guess? Just go ahead and unmute or put it in the chat. Okay. Pretty good guesses, but they're not right. Okay, 125. 125, isn't it interesting? In two years, the Humboldt County Office of Education will turn 170 years old. Isn't that something? As part of the California State Constitution, the Office of the County Superintendent in 1853 was established. And the first rule, and if you look in Ed Code, it actually says the first responsibility of the County Superintendent is to superintend districts. And at that time, that was the only rule. And I'm not sure how they figured that out, but you can imagine with the size of Humboldt County, what a responsibility that was at that time. Humboldt, you can fit Rhode Island and Delaware inside Humboldt County. And that role was incredibly, um, I think, tough back then. So uh, can you imagine 170 years old in 2023? So the Steelhead in the Classroom program, I love to, to look at that as a career technical education program for the littles. And I'm gonna turn it over to Tanya to talk just a little bit about the great things that she and her team, including Jim, are involved with through our Education at Work program. So Tanya, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Colby. So yeah, I'm, um, I'm the, our department is the Career and College Resources Department, and I'm the program manager of that department. And we have about 15 staff members in our department that run a variety of programs. So the Education at Work programs are only a few of those programs. But basically, the focus of our department is to support um, Humboldt County students and districts as they are preparing their students for their preferred and prepared future. So we're helping them, um, you know, we have our CalSOAP program that really helps with financial aid and with kind of students navigating the next steps to higher education. We have our transition partnership program and workability programs that work with students with special needs to help them transition to their, their next steps. And then our education at work programs, which are really helping students um, kind of figure out what careers they're interested in and, to give them some hands-on opportunities to explore those careers prior to high school graduation or prior to choosing a college major or deciding you know, what jobs they want to get. And so Education at Work started probably, the initiative was probably came out about four or five years ago with some, some di different headings of our program. So today I'm gonna talk about the Trades Academy, our Health Career Exploration Project and our College Connect program and some of those, um, those exciting um, things that we've been able to, to start up back up coming out of COVID. So 
first I'm going to talk about um, College Connect. And College Connect is the, um, the program that's headed up by Jim Ritter. And basically the idea behind College Connect is to get those kids out on the college campuses, exploring, sitting in on classes and really seeing what it feels like to be a college student. Um, you know, it's college as a concept and for some students, they've never even set foot on a college campus. So it's really scary to think about going out to college. So this year we were really excited that we could actually do some in-person field trips again to college campuses. And it's been a little bit limited. All students need to wear masks. We're limited in the number of students. So it's a little bit modified, but Jim has been able to organize 12 field trips to HSU and CR campuses um, in, in, the spring, in the fall, so since September. And over 75 students have been able to participate in those. Um, we've had students from many, many, many of the high schools, like almost all of the high schools attend. And we've had a number of different classes that they've been able to attend, as you can see on the screen. Um, Jim, I'm hoping you want to advance, we'll show some pictures. So at CR, um, they've been able to go to, CR has limited the number of field trips. So we've really tried to get into our career education and um, we have career education courses. So these are some pictures from um, a career education field trip where the students were able to go into automotive technology courses and then also go see the wood, the woodworking courses. I believe also manufacturing has been visited. And then Jim did take a group of kids from um, South Fork to be able to tour a kinesiology class as well. So we are hoping that more will continue to be able to go and visit even more classes at CR in the, um, in the spring. And then HSU students have visited um, film, art, environmental science, chemistry, theater arts, and forestry classes. Jim was able to organize an all day field trip with some students where they were able to um, also eat lunch in the J and go to some of the other, other um, departments as well. So they could really get a really good feel about what a day on the HSU campus might be like. These pictures are from a forestry field trip that I believe was last week or the week before where they actually got to go out and hike in the forest with the professor and really kind of explore the forest while they were learning about the environment of the forest. So it, it's really been exciting. It was kind of touch and go of whether we'd be able to be in person this year. So that was, that's been, the kids have just loved it. And then the Trades Academy. So the Trades Academy, you may have seen um, Jack Shepard driving around a trades trailer. And um, when the Trades Academy started about four years ago, Jack was taking um, a trailer to middle schools and to some of the schools that did not have um, industrial technology or building trades courses to really expose them to some different trades. We have we've created a number of videos and those types of things. With COVID, we've had to put a hiatus on the trailer because it's such an enclosed space. So Jack's really been focusing on organizing field trips to visit some of our industry partners, primarily in the areas of building and construction trades and automotive. Um, he's He's been able to go out on six field trips so far this year with students from our Eureka, Fortuna, East High, and South Fork High School. Um, he's constantly talking to industries um, and, and the, um, the school districts. We have career guidance texts that help set up these field trips for the students at their schools, depending on their interests. And he has been able to take a total of, um, of 55 students out into the field to tour quality auto works. I know they've gone to Creation Auto Body. Um, they've gone out to um, a number of different, different sites and it's been really great. We're so thankful to our industry partners to allow these students to come in. And I know that it's really an enriching experience for the industry partners and the feedback from the students is just amazing. I know they came back from, I think it was, a, I think it was Creations Auto Body where they came back and nine kids had taken job applications with them and we're really, really excited about the opportunity. Um, Jack's also been really instrumental in working with our, our internship coordinator, Karen Brooks, on sending students up for internships in the trades. And their most recent one was a student at Arcata High who was really passionate about foreign, foreign cars, um, was able to get an internship at um, German Motors. And Jack and Karen came back from setting the student up at his internship and they said this kid was just so excited about this opportunity. And so was the, um, so was the business owner to really have this passionate student working with him. So that's been um, just a super exciting thing. And then the third area, the third program I wanna talk about is 
um, our health careers exploration project. So this started up again, I think it was about maybe three, three years ago or so. Um, we're a part of our organization is a part and participates in the Humboldt Del Norte pre-medical education task force, which is a group of, um, well, it's, it's doctors and primarily healthcare professionals that are very, very concerned with our dwindling, with our dwindling um, health, our dwindling field of workers in the healthcare industry. And you've probably all suffered um, having to wait for doctor's appointments or not being able to schedule doctor's appointments because we are lacking healthcare workers. So our office is really working with the community to try to um, interest and excite students in the vast number of careers there are in, in health career in, in the health field and and also promoting the idea of you know going away to get your your nursing or medical or health degree, health careers degree, and then coming back to Humboldt County and practicing here. And so that's part of the, um, the HUMPET, the task force, is really trying to create this, these, these local students that get excited, get trained, and then come back and or um, go through certificate programs that, um, that either are offered through CR's career education program, their community education program, and or um, programs through Humboldt, or C, um, Humboldt and CR where they can just stay in our area and start working right away. So through this, we have our HESI program. HESI is our Health Exploration Summer Institute. And I believe we have done it three years. We did have to take the summer of 2020 off due to COVID restrictions. We were able to have it last year um, with, I believe there were 16 participants. It was a somewhat modified program, but the students were still able to have a really enriching experience. It's about a two and a half week program where students um, in, a, in a normal non-COVID year, they would be out in clinicals, um, shadowing professionals in various, various aspects of healthcare and learning about, um, learning about everything from nursing to mental health to doing rounds at hospitals. Um, with, with COVID restrictions, we brought those professionals to them where they did some hands-on things like learning to take blood and, um, and learning CPR and um, some of those, those types of skills along with hearing from the professionals. And it was, it was still a wonderful enriching experience for the students, even without the job shadowing. Um, and then we also do arrange um, career speakers. We've done three, six career panels so far in the fall for, um, with health professionals for in our bio community health classes at Eureka High, Fortuna High and McKinleyville High. And then there is a health careers club we just learned at Arcata High School. They don't have a bio community health class, but those students that are real interested, it was actually a student that went through HESI last summer, started a health careers class, a health careers club at Arcata High School. And next week we have a career panel that will be speaking. Uh, it will be actually a career panel of people who work in, in surgery to be speaking to these students um, at Arcata High School. So that's, you know, we, we are always looking for industry professionals in any, in any area who are interested in providing mentorship, guest speaker opportunities, um, job shadows, field trips to their business or internships. So if that's anything that, you know, spurs your interest, I would, our department would love to talk to you and my contact information is on the screen. So I'm open to any questions or comments, but that's a little bit about our department. Great, thank you, Tanya, so much. And you know, I, you know, I also, you know, the Humboldt County Office of Education has just so so benefited from the Arcata Chamber of Commerce through the, you know, the Trades Academy a couple uh, years ago, and of course the great work that that Jim is doing with companies like Cocatat and uh, Ken. Uh, thanks for bringing that up. I don't want to put you on the spot, Jim, but um, if you if you wouldn't mind talking just a little bit about uh, your work with Cocatat, the kids, and Arcata High School right now. Uh, thank you, Colby. You guys are doing a great job, by the way. Thanks so much for, for hosting tonight. Um, I'm happy to talk a little bit about this project. Cocatat, of course, all of us know they have about 150 employees now and are always looking uh, to add great team members to um, their work here in, in Humboldt County. And we have a new partnership that has really come on board this fall between Cocatat, HCOE, 
the Arcata Chamber and Arcata High School. Many of you probably know Arcata High School has um, the Arcata Arts Academy and um, they have a intensive sewing class, which is right in the wheelhouse of what Kokatat needs. So um, Kokatat installed a pneumatic sewing machine in one of the classrooms and are sending their staff over every week on Wednesdays to help the students who, are, who chose to take that class learn those skills. And then we're also um, having the students go on an ongoing basis over to Kokatat to see firsthand what the jobs are there. In the second semester, this will evolve into a job shadow program. So students will be able to see all the different jobs that are at Kokatat, including computer design, graphic art, et cetera, in addition to the sewing jobs. And um, Kokatat is offering up paid internships for any students that might wanna take it to the next level and actually come on board as team members. So. Another great example of how the Arcata Chamber and our members help to support young people in our community and at the same time develop our workforce. Thanks, Colby. Thanks so much, Jim. Thank you, Tanya. I really appreciate it. Uh, so, okay, everyone, we're going to transition to the next uh, trivia question. How many school districts does Humboldt County currently have? 15, 5, 31, and 22. And uh, Mr. Davies Hughes kind of gave it away earlier. <laughs> so yes, 31, very good, 31. Um, and in addition to 31 um, uh, school districts, everyone, and, and by the way, that equates to about 87 schools in our county. Um, we have 14 charter schools. So we've got a lot of educational opportunities, something I am always very proud of a lot of diversity in terms of educational choice for families. In fact, per capita, Humboldt County has the most school districts in the state of California, if you think about that. Okay, just a couple other examples we'd love to share with you about some good things that are going on to help young people explore the world. Um, a couple of years ago, I actually began what we call the Humboldt Taiwan Partnership. I had the good fortune to travel to Taiwan to speak at an educational conference. And while there, I actually toured the entire country <clears throat> and I discovered what a rich indigenous um, native tribal community they have there, just like Humboldt County. And so when I came back to Humboldt County, I reached out to Margot Robbins, who's the Indian education director out at the Klamath Trinity School District, and also, uh, the Yurok, uh, Hoopa, and Kudu tribes. And we began what's called the Indigenous Youth Cultural Exchange, where every month kids from um, Indigenous students from here and Indigenous students from Taiwan actually get together via Zoom, obviously. <laughs> um, and they actually, each month, they focus on a different part of their tribal traditions. So this actually earlier this week, I think it was two days ago, uh, we focused on cultural relics and life. Um, and then also actually, no, this, this week we focused on traps and hunting. So kids really talked about traditional food gathering methods. The students here talked about the importance of um, harvesting acorns and the salmon, uh, steelhead and so on and so forth. And the students over in Taiwan focused on uh, deer and other um, hunting. Uh, we work with the Zhou tribe over in Taiwan, and the goal, it really, more than just sharing, is this is a youth leadership development opportunity for our indigenous youth, where the kids are actually the ones who are sharing, and the adults are there just to prop them up and support and guide them. And this is actually going to be culminated, where we're going to be taking 29 um, Karu, Kupa, and Yurok students to Taiwan, it was in February, but because of COVID, we pushed it back to June. We're actually gonna be taking them. So they're gonna be meeting their new friends in person uh, over in Taiwan. And it's our hope that we, because it's an exchange, those students are actually gonna be coming back the following year here to Humboldt County. And we, our students have actually been invited to a very um, sacred festival called the Miasby Festival uh, over in Taiwan. 
And ideally, um, when the students over there are gonna come back and participate in dances here. So it's really, really exciting. There's a lot of schools in Humboldt County right now. That's just one example. Union Street Charter School is another example. That entire school has adopted, quote unquote, adopted a Taiwanese school in the center part of the country where each teacher and all students do cultural exchange opportunities. In February, um, there are two teachers, one here, Greg Guerra, and another teacher in Taiwan that are actually gonna be offering a workshop for all teachers in Humboldt County who wanna do this and teachers in Taiwan. So the goal is we are gonna be scaling this up pretty massively with the idea of youth leadership development and cultural exchange. We know how small this world has gotten and how many um, good things come out of learning about other people's cultures. So that's just another quick example. And then um, one final piece of trivia. Actually, I've got two more. Approximately how many TK-12 students do Humboldt County schools serve? 35,000? 7,898, 17,900, or 12,500? What do you think? Pretty good guess, Shoshana. Oh, Andy gets it, 17,900, 17,900. So over the last 10 years, the, the enrollment um, is relatively stable, but we've had a slight decline. Um, Prior to the pandemic, we actually had an incline and we tipped over into 18,000 students. But by and large, our enrollment's been pretty steady over the last, I'd say 10 years uh, with a slight, slight decline. Okay, really, really quickly. Something that um, uh, is important to know and will have a big impact on our, um, on our school-aged children uh, and also on our early childhood educators um, in this county. Beginning next year, uh, the state of California is starting what's called an implementing universal transitional kindergarten, which means it's basically the first of two years of kindergarten. So all students who are age four, uh, right, um, age four by September will be able to go to transitional kindergarten. Now, TK has existed in our county for about the last, I would say eight years, um, but it wasn't required. Now it's a requirement that all school districts at least offer that option for all students. And so that's gonna cause quite a big impact on daycare centers, um, but it's also gonna have really positive benefits because statistics show that the earlier students are exposed and get ready for school, there are better learning outcomes by grade three. And grade three, and I won't get into the details, grade three is an important year for things like literacy and uh, mathematics. Um, just a quick little tidbit, just this addition alone is, is California is expected to need an additional 10,000 to 11,000 new TK teachers by in within three years. That's a big lift. And one of the one of the roles of the Humboldt County Office of Education is we're going to be helping districts navigate how to do all of this. Um, because of our rural setting, uh, implementing universal TK presents some big, big challenges. But knowing us, we're going to be able to overcome them. Okay, last, and I promise, last. Trivia question. In 1948, and this is a pretty specific one, everyone, so my apologies. In 1948, this school district was formed by consolidating 19 districts. Any guesses? Rika City Schools? Southern Humboldt? Southern Humboldt? Southern Humboldt it is, everyone. Beginning after World War II, very good. After World War II, um, there was this massive consolidation effort in Humboldt County and California in general to take all of those original very tiny districts and sort of merge them because of resource shiftings in our economy. So I would say between the end of World War II 
and the middle of the 1960s, those hundred original districts, that's where we stalled them and shrink down to the 31 that we have now for the most part. So be, between the end of the war and the middle to late 60s, that was a really important time in Humboldt County school history. So the last example I'd love to share with you about some exciting things is directly resulted, a direct result of this pandemic. So over the last two years, we didn't realize, we didn't suddenly discover that we had a digital divide, but the digital divide was uncovered in ways that we didn't currently, we couldn't currently see at the time. Be and the main reason is because it was almost optional for school. But as we all know, during the pandemic, when kids were learning from home, the internet became a necessity. And what we realized is that there were literally thousands of children in our community that simply didn't have access to the internet. And without access to the internet, you had no access to a quality education during the pandemic. And so a big part of what the County Office of Education uh, focused on over the last two years is looking at the digital divide. How do we get devices in the hands of children? In fact, by my estimates, we probably were in the county, we brought in over probably 35 to 4,500 Chromebooks, for example, and also um, what they call hotspots. That's just the County Office of Education, but districts all over our county were engaged in the same thing. So we had this massive influx of new technology. But the problem is hotspots are essentially a band-aid. They rely on cellular technology. They're very expensive. And so Superintendent Thurman, the state superintendent, um, launched what's called the Digital Divide Innovation Challenge. And the goal is, is to essentially eliminate the digital divide in California within two years. And so we have been working with one of the finalists of the Digital Divide Innovation Challenge called Delight Access Labs to create new models for good, reliable internet in Humboldt County. How many of you pay over $100 a month for your internet? Yeah, pretty much all of us, right? And for many of us, we take that for granted. But when you think about the cost of the internet, $100 a month for a family who's on a fixed or very low income or non-existent income, it's an impossibility to uh, bring this into the home. And so working with Delette Access Labs, one of the finalists, we narrowed in on the community of Fairhaven, which during the pandemic, there were over 30 families without internet. Okay, it's a bit, essentially the whole town. And so what we're doing is we're working in partnership. And again, that word's really important, it, working in partnership with the Fairhaven Firehouse. And we're creating what's called a intelligent fabric net fabric network and that's what this picture is where there's going to be nodes strategically located where every home in Fairhaven is now going to have access to high-speed internet that's at least twice as fast as what you have at your house for $15 a month and the goal is, is we're creating a new model to bring in competition and we'll be able to replicate that model throughout all the dark spots in Humboldt County. And believe me, there are many. Um, when I last counted out in Klamath Trinity, there were over 400 families without access to reliable internet. So that's one of the um, long-term sort of infrastructure things that we're working on at the County Office of Education. And with that, I know we gave you lots of examples, lots of trivia. By the way, you all did very well on the trivia. We're just gonna end it there. And if you have any questions or thoughts or uh, comments for uh, any three of us, or I'll, I'll include Jim, any four of us. So thanks everybody. Oh, thanks Colby and thanks, thanks everybody. That was a really great presentation. I'm definitely inspired by your work. So thank you for all that information. Please feel free if you have any questions, just go ahead and unmute and ask your questions. Or if you wanna raise your hand, you can try that too. There's gotta be some questions out there. Sorrel, please. <laughs> I have to ask this question. 
I really think tourism and travel or hospitality is an incredibly important industry in our area. And I'm wondering what could be the relationship between HCOE and that industry, whether it's the work partnership, work at education. Um, what do you see as a, um, a possibility there? Thank you. Terrell, thank you so much. And um, you know, from my perspective, it, everything starts with a conversation. So um, we're always open to hearing about the needs of the community, recognizing what the possibilities and the impact, positive impacts are for students. So really what the, the first possibility is just picking up the phone call, sending in an email to Tanya, to myself, to Michael, and setting up and having a conversation. Um, for us, you know, education at its best has an academic component, but a clinical component as well. And the, nothing beats tourism uh, in industry and place-based learning in a place like Humboldt County. So I just encourage you, if you have ideas, bring them to us. And we're all about connecting people and figuring out how to do things. Um, I think a good place to start would be um, like job shadows, potential internships. Um, those, that would be a real easy thing. Cause we do have, you know, we have an internship coordinator who, who, really works with the businesses to kind of find out what are you looking for? And then we also, and then she communicates with um, the people at the districts to find out what are those students looking for? And it would be, you know, and, and kind of pairing up those kids because, you know, we have our industry partners in our little, in our niches that we work with career and technical education, but we don't have a lot of industry partners um, in things like tourism or hospitality. And I think having, you know, that the, the broader the range of businesses that we have that are willing to take on students in, in, in an experience, um, the more options we have for those students. And so, you know, I would love to speak further on that with someone. And her name, if I may uh, ask about the internship coordinator, her name is Karen, is that what I heard correctly? Karen Brooks, yes. Karen yeah. Brooks, okay, thanks. And we also, in addition, we really like to, um, where possible, align with other, um, other, other partners. So for example, HSU, they've got a fairly strong program as well. And so, um, you know, as we're thinking about it, we always like to keep in mind in the, in the front end, how can we uh, make sure we're aligning with already existing programs? Right. Well, I have a question. Does it? I'm, uh, I know there's experts on this that are not here tonight, but do that? Does that new broadband cable is that going to help with these blackout spots for internet in the county? Are you guys part of that program? Yeah, there, there's a company. You know the um, the fiber that's coming off from Singapore. Uh, yeah. The company that's in charge, many of you probably know this, they're called Vero Fiber. They're a middle mile um, provider. We actually worked with them um, or, you know, we met with them and Dillette Access Labs. Dillette Access Labs, which is the company I was talking about, is a is last mile provider. And together, those two, those two um, entities could really solve those dark spots when it comes to uh, internet access. So I deeply... Yeah, great news. No question. Um, thanks for the presentation. That was awesome. I love Steelhead. That was a beautiful film. Thank you. Um, and oh, do we know how many students like struggle with housing insecurity? And does the Office of Education uh, uh, play a part in helping with that? Um, I'm just curious. I just know it's a big issue in our community. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, I'm, I'm happy to speak to it or if Michael, you want to jump in? Yeah, thank you, Colby and Matt. Thanks for the question. Absolutely. Um, so we have a whole department um, that deals with homeless and foster youth or that addresses the needs of homeless and foster youth. And that can um, range from services of really connecting them with some of those partners that we have, you know, whether they be um, mental health services for the families, social services for the families, you know, getting them transportation 
tickets, um, uh, access to food items. Um, and then also our coordinator in that office, you know, liaisons with the other school districts as well, the other 31 school districts to make sure that there's a coordinated service throughout the county for those students who are experiencing homelessness, um, especially those who are experiencing homelessness, but also that department, as I said, addresses the needs of, of our foster youth as well. Both, and, and of course, what I spoke to a little earlier um, as well, Matt, was, you know, kind of that achievement gap or that opportunity gap you know, the homeless and foster youth is certainly a segment of the population that has been identified as, you know, being being part of that 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 achievement gap or being on the on the lower end of that. So we have to address their needs educationally as well. That's awesome. Thank you for for being being a part of that solution. Thank, thanks so much. Well, should we jump into some more raffle prizes? And if people come up with more questions, you can always throw those out there. But um, thank you again for that really great presentation, everyone. Absolutely, that was wonderful. So our next raffle gift is donated by the, uh, the McKin try again, by the Arcata Chamber. And that is a gift certificate for Six Rivers Brewery. This is a $25 gift certificate. And it's been won by Meredith Matthews. Meredith Matthews, congratulations. And remember, if you win, you will, you'll get an email, but be sure to contact the chamber so you can arrange a time to pick up your gifts. This next one is donated by our host, HCOE. Thank you guys so much for hosting this mixer. This is a $50 gift card for Plaza Grill. And it's been won by the one from HSU that almost always wins. Sorrel, congratulations. And we'll do another one. This is donated by Arcata Main Street. It's another awesome Arcata coupon book, $10 value. And it's been won from uh, Wallace and Hines, Tom. Tom from Wallace and Hines, congratulations. So what do you think, Molly? Should we keep going or do we have other things to announce? Yeah, let's do a couple more. Tom, you jumped on right in time. Next one is donated by the Chamber. It is a $25 gift certificate for the Plaza Grill. And this has been won by Meredith Matthews. Congratulations, Meredith. Just a reminder also, not only donating items, but be sure to buy your tickets so you can win these wonderful raffle prizes. And the next one, again, thank you HCOE for hosting this. This is a $75 gift certificate for, for SALT. And it's been won by, from Coast Central Credit Union, Matt A. Matt from Coast Central Credit Union. Congratulations, Matt. So what do you think, Molly? Yeah, let's open it up. Does anybody have any announcements you'd like to share with the group or just tell us well, how you're doing? I just wanted to say we have one of uh, the Trades Academy's strongest spo sponsors who just came on. Welcome aboard there, Tom. And Wallace yeah. and Hines, you guys have been awesome with that. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. It's, it's good to be here. I haven't caught one of these in a while. December is by far my most favorite of all the mixers. And uh, hopefully next year we'll get to do this in person, right? Yes, please. Yeah. And Carol, thank you for the help uh, last week at the Mazzotti's open house uh, that we had at Wells Pines. It's going to be a great uh, opening in January. I hope all of you will be there. It's going to be a nice event. Probably going to be a black tie event, just so you know. I love it. Do you have a date for that, Tom? No, we think it's going to be... Uh, we're, we're dealing with the, uh, the, the supply chain. Uh, it's not like an at, uh, atmospheric river. It's quite the opposite, isn't it? Um, it looks like it'll probably be late January to early February okay. for Mazzotti's. Yeah. Hey, Tom, can I borrow one of those cool tuxes that you have for that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I do have some. And, uh, and uh, you definitely can, Jim. Definitely. So anyway, it's good to be here. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Any other announcements? Shoshana, you want to tell us? Shoshana's raising her hand. 
I'd be happy to. Yes, so we've got lots of fun things going on for the Season of Wonder and Light with Arcada Main Street. Um, and there's also that coupon book a few people have won. We're so excited about the coupon book. I've got the mock-up, not real one in my hand, but the real ones are out and it's so cool. They've got perforated pages. They found an old one 15 years ago in the back of the storage unit at Main Street and I recreated it for Main Street and it's really fun. It's got like over 50 coupons around downtown Arcada and beyond, like all across Arcada. So it's pretty, pretty fantastic if you like Arcada. It's only $10 and it pays for itself very quickly. And the Chamber of Commerce will have a few copies in their fabulous space very soon. But uh, so I know um, I know that Tom won one. Who won the other one? Somebody else here? Or? Matt from Coast Central. Oh, awesome. Yay, Matt. Wonderful. Cool. But yeah, so I just wanted to mention that the Sunday art market's going on, which is the little thing we popped up last time around this time when it was really dark and sad and lonely. And now there's lots of craft markets going on around town. But we have Santa coming this week and next weekend for a while. We've got Santamonium, the Bandamonium version coming. And we've got various bands coming and a lot of choirs and uh, school groups and carolers have been really wanting to perform forever and ever since last year and uh, they're they're coming to our markets into the arts arcada and just add a lot of the events that we've got going um can i can i share a screen to show just three to show off three little things okay cool so exciting very quick don't worry i won't take long but I've got three little things at the Sunday art market just popping through there. We had Hanukkah on the plaza last week in the center and we had a lot of uh, bands and activities. But this week we've got Flynn Martin and Santa and ba Santamonium. Uh, we'll have Santa the next week and Gatehouse Well and some carolers from I think a company of voices. And then the Snowflake Queen's Winter Solstice Snow Party on the Solstice. That's my party. That'll be the fake snow raining down. It's like uh, bubbles from the bath, bubble bath, and people are trying to throw it at each other and make hairdos out of it. It's super fun in the very open middle of the plaza. Um, and then for Arts Arcade next weekend, there's some music and a night market and fun things going on in the middle. More carolers from Jacoby Creek uh, Choir, this time in Santimonium. And a wine, and chocolate, and cheese event. We'll have some awesome ambassadors invited to come and uh, help with all the event, but everyone's welcome. Welcome. It's a new event we're trying out. Trying, it's going to be behind Jacoby Storehouse. Uh, Bill Chino is really helping us with the infrastructure, making it work, and we really would love to see some of you there. It'll be fun. Share it with your friends. It's a, we're trying to do it a couple times in the year, maybe with different themes, but it's an experiment. Brett, what's up, Brett? Hi. Are you going to come? You should come and join us. It'll be fun. <laughs> I will check it out. Super cool. And then uh, and then Santa's. We have Vintage Fire Truck Parade we did last year, uh, where we didn't tell anybody because we had to get it approved by the county and all that, and it, we didn't gather. So we just did a parade, and random people who saw it had a lot of fun seeing us and waving at us. So this year, we're trying to tell people to go to the shopping centers um, around Arcata, where we'll be. Where there's a little party going on in the Valley West Shopping Center and in the Sunnybury Shopping Center. Next year, we hope there'll be parties in all the shopping centers, but the Farmer's Park is always a party, so that will go around that twice and head all around. It's really exciting to ride on there. And you might recognize this fabulous elf. Um, uh, we've got an elf from uh, from Arcade Exchange. <laughs> we'll be rocking the fire truck with Santa and myself. So it'll be really fun to uh, to see that go by and to cheer it on. It's also part of the Arcade Outdoor Events Grant, which is brought to you by the City of Arcade and the Playhouse Arts, which is really picking up steam. We just ordered something very exciting that will be here in the spring to go along with the star stage and some other equipment to help people make events happen. So it's pretty neat to see what will happen this next year. But in March, stay tuned for something really exciting. And yeah, that's all the, the things coming up this month in our Arcata downtown. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Good job. Oh, and Jackie texted me asking to say about the Arcata Playhouse Jig and Thistle show opens tomorrow and goes for this weekend and next weekend. I'll be the guest performer on Saturday night, so you should come Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, so much great stuff happening this season. Brett, did you have a comment or an announcement? Yes, I know Shoshana thought I was waving at her, but I was actually raising my hand. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, well, I want to say that was a great presentation. I'm into service learning of all ways. It's cool with the salmon, and I'm sure they'll be doing things with other industries around here. Um, forest management and things like that, I hope. And the food industry, which I'm involved in. I've hired lots of high school kids. Unfortunately, they, once I got them trained, they go off to college. But um, I'm here actually as a board member of the 
Greater Trinidad Chamber of Commerce. And I just want to let everyone know after not having it last year, the Trinidad to Clam Beach Run is happening this year. And um, we're getting a great response from it. Um, not only a lot of runners signing up right away and um, a lot of sponsors. And uh, that's what I'm putting the ask out here is more sponsors, you know. Um, and I know the people that ask are the business leaders. <laughs> And um, people have been very receptive and we're happy. And, you know, just the thing about the Trinidad Chamber, we kind of run off of our events. So things were getting tight without having the race, without had, having the fish fest. Um, we've had to like kind of, you know, tighten our belts. So we're looking for a great response for this race. Um, don't know if we're doing a fish fest in the summer anymore. But we're thinking around February or March doing a crab fest while it's still crab season. And, um, you know, I like food events and that should be really fun. We're trying to figure out how to go about that and how to make it good. But um, the Clam Beach Run, January 29th, um, it's going to be a shortened version instead of the eight mile, just the five and three miles, um, just because we have to just tighten things up a little bit uh, can't have so many people riding the shuttle buses and all that sort of thing just weird you know covid <laughs> thing so uh but keep it in mind everybody if you know somebody that's in a running or you like to run come up and run on the beach with us and um and you know consider a sponsorship and this is my first Arcada Zoom chamber mixer. Sorry, I haven't been around, but it's like, it's not like being there with y'all, but I love you and can't wait to see you soon. That's it for me. Oh, thanks, Brett. It's really good to see you. I was excited when you popped up in your box. <laughs> we do a couple more gifts. Yeah, let's do it. I guess All we're right. getting close to the end here. Next one is donated by the Arcaded Chamber. It is a gift certificate for Six Rivers Brewery, $25 gift certificate, and it's been won by Connie Stewart. Congratulations, Connie. And our next one is donated by Alex Stillman, who always puts together amazing packets. This is a photo and fact set of nine greeting cards featuring local photography and information and Ruth Bader Ginsburg earrings. And this has been won by, from Wallace and Hines Tom, congratulations. Next one, HCOE, a $70, $75 gift card for the campground. And this has been one from the chamber, Tennessee. Congratulations. I love it. That's why we buy tickets. And the next one is also donated by the chamber, the Arcade Chamber. It is a $25 gift certificate for Los Bagels. Remember, shop local during this holiday season, guys. And this has been won by... Colleen Tar Hobart. Colleen, congratulations. Shall we do a couple more? Or do we have any more announcements? Raise your hand if you want to make an announcement. Everybody is, oh, Rob, unmute yourself. Make your announcement. You're, you're muted. There we go. Okay. Hey, not only did I finally figure out how to put the picture on, you, you, you taught me how to unmute. Anyway, today we're in December. Wonderful time for massage. We've all been kind of locked up in this COVID uh, isolation zone. And um, following, of course, following all COVID protocols, I welcome any and everybody to come and get a massage, either from myself or your favorite uh, therapist. We're happy to help. We're happy to be here. Hands-on right now is a really, really nice way to integrate being isolated and starting, hopefully starting to expand into uh, a, a more open community. And uh, I didn't mention it, but I really appreciate the presentation earlier. I like education a lot. I think everyone should be educated if nothing else, just to expand their options. That's all. 
Oh, I'm Rob, Rob Rice Massage on the plaza. Very good. Thank you, Rob. Okay, You're we'll welcome. do another gift and then see if there's another announcement. This ne next one is again donated by our host, Humboldt County Office of Education. It is a $25 gift card for Los Bagels. And this has been won by from Coast Central Credit Union, Carrie Talman. Carrie from Coast Central won that one. Do we have another announcement? Looks like Tom might have his hand up there. Okay, Please. Tom. Um, okay, I'm going to wear a different hat. It's with the Eureka Theater. Uh, we've been closed. Actually, we the very last event we had was an arcaded chamber mixer in 2020. And uh, but we're about to have our first movie open to the public in about two weeks. So uh, it's going to be a Christmas, two Christmas movies. Uh, keep an eye out. We're just posting on social media on Facebook. But uh, Eureka Theater is going to start showing movies again. And we're looking for sponsors for new one. I think Joe Mazzotti is going to do the movie. Uh, it's a foodie movie, the Italian one, the Italian food, um, the big night, the big night. The other event I'd like to, with my rotary hat on, is we're going to do, a, it's a taste of the holidays. A lot of times we always did. That was our big fundraiser. Uh, tomorrow's. I think Sunday is the big day or tomorrow's the big day for Taste of the Holidays. If you've not seen it, um, uh, it's, uh, it's a Saturday. bottle of wine and food. What was that? It's Saturday. It's tomorrow? Saturday. Okay, today's Thursday. Um, but anyway, um, Taste of the Holidays. If, if you're interested, it's $70 and a lot of great uh, caterers are, are providing food and uh, wine. And uh, so that's Saturday. Thank you. That was my buck. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? Let's do another prize. This is donated by the Arcata Chamber. This is a combination two bottles of Humboldt hot sauce. You have the Emerald and also the Island style and a six pack of Lost Coast beer, which is a great white. And that has been won by Co from Coast Central Credit Union, Matt from Coast Central. And any others? If not, I'll make the final announcement. Yeah, let's do it. Let's wrap okay. it up. It's almost seven. So I'm with Benbo and please put on your calendar Friday, March 4th. We are planning on having our all county mixer in person at the Benbo Historic Inn Friday, March 4th. Make your room reservations early. Probably the most fun party you'll go to of the year. It's just amazing. And right now we have our gift certificate sale on 20% off. So you can buy gift certificates in any value that you want from the Benbow Historic Inn. Now through December 31st at 9 p.m., you get a 20% discount. And you can start using it at the beginning of next year. So they make great gifts or you can just right. buy it and hold on to it for the future. So Molly, do you have any other announcements or should I do the final door prize drawing? Yeah, let's, let's announce okay. the, the winner. The last one is the um, overnight stay at the Benbow Historic Inn. And this has been won by, and I'm so glad it's one of your board members, Kim, Ken Hamlick. Congratulations, Ken. Woohoo! Awesome. Well, if anybody has any more final thoughts, speak now. Um, otherwise, thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you, Colby, Michael, and Tanya, and Jim, of course. Um, for yeah, giving us all that great information. And it was really great to see everybody. And next next month in person, what is it, January 6th, I wanna say? Shoot, I don't have my calendar in front of me. First Thursday of January, in person, Redwood Rocks Collective is hosting our mixer. So that's really exciting. But hopefully we'll see everybody in person downtown on the Arcata Plaza for the season of Wonder and Light. Shoshana, did you have one more thing to say? To say that dance studio is so excited to be a member again of because I had it as a member, but now the collective is so excited to be a part of this. And there were some fun mixers there back in the day. So this is going to be really sweet. Yeah, really exciting and, and ribbon cutting there um, December 11th. So if you want a sneak preview of of the space before the mixer, come to the ribbon cutting and we'll be getting info out about that. And um, as always, be in touch, you know, say hi, drop me a line, give us a call, an email. Um, we want to see you and connect with you. So 
Have a great night, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you.